wonder hussy here in the beautiful Sierra Nevada foothills in a place called Volcano. Volcano is one of the oldest towns from the California Gold Rush. Okay, the Gold Rush. Remember back in 1848 when gold was first discovered about 30 miles north of here in a town called Coloma? Well, I guess originally they tried to keep the discovery a secret, but that didn't last very long. And before you know it, pretty much every able-bodied man who wanted to get rich quick was headed out west to seek his fortune. And so before you know it, dozens of quaint little mining towns sprung up all over the Sierra Nevada foothills, including right here in Volcano. Okay, it's called Volcano because I guess the first white men who discovered this valley thought it looked like the bowl of a volcano. And that's why they named it Volcano. And now it's interesting, this historical plaque actually says Volcano is four miles that way. But as you can see, Volcano is right here. We're standing right in the middle of it. Well, it's actually really interesting. Apparently, this plaque originally did stand about four miles away in the town of Pine Grove, because back in 1934, I guess the federal government had plans to dam some river in this area, and the little town site of Volcano would be flooded. Okay, I guess the original idea was for this sign to be sort of an obituary for the former town of Volcano, now buried under a man-made reservoir, but underneath the obituary sign, there's another sign that says, Volcano is right here. <laughs> Apparently, because of geology and water rights negated the plan of building the dam, so Volcano didn't drown, not by a damn sight. I love a good pun. Yeah, I guess apparently enough people had mineral rights, mining rights, and water rights to where the federal government wasn't able to dam whatever river is around here and flood this super quaint and very interesting historic town. Okay, so in addition to these awesome historical plaques placed here by the Clampers, that's right, E. Clampus Vitus, alive and well, up here in gold country. Well, aside from these historical signs, there's a ton of interesting stuff in this tiny little town. And when I say tiny, I'm not kidding. I think there's only something like 59 people who live here nowadays. And it's really just one street, sort of like a highway <laughs> that runs through it. But these streets are packed with fascinating history like this right here. Look right next to the... Uh, Volcano Four Mile Obituary Sign. There's a plaque to Brigadier General Harry Liver's Edge, who was born right here in Volcano. Y'all know who Harry Liver's Edge was? He was one of the Marines in that iconic Iwo Jima photo. Okay, Harry Liver's Edge was apparently the commanding officer of the 28th Marine Regiment, which was the Marines who raised the flag on Iwo Jima on February 23rd, 1945. Talk about a local hometown hero. Harry Liversedge from this tiny little mining town tucked way up in the Sierra Nevada foothills. Okay, it may not look like much now, but apparently back in the 1850s, this was a wild place. I think it was even featured in an episode of The Big Valley. Okay, remember that TV show, The Big Valley? I think it was starring Barbara Stanwyck. Well, one of the episodes of The Big Valley was filmed right here in Little Volcano. And not just The Big Valley, Huell Hauser also shot, I think, two episodes of his iconic and very inspiring to me TV show, California's Gold, right here in Volcano. And with good reason, for a tiny little town in the middle of nowhere, a lot of interesting stuff happened here. After gold was first discovered in 1848, over $200 million worth was mined in this area. So this once rough and tumble mining camp grew into quite the civilized city. A post office was established in 1851 and by 1855, Volcano was home to three saloons, 17 hotels, 
hundreds of houses and many firsts, including the first circulating library in the state of California, the first theater group, which is still performing to this day, the first astronomical observatory, which is where the Great Comet of 1861 was discovered, and the first legal hanging. Okay, I'm sure there were plenty of other illegal hangings in California back in those days, but here in Volcano is where a judge first legally sentenced a man to die by hanging. How about that? Okay, I thought this was pretty interesting. This is the Old Abe Volcano Blues Cannon. That's right, a cannon. Like back in the day, before they had tanks, they used to push these giant wheeled cannons around. Let me see if I can squeeze my camera between these bars so you can get a better look. Okay, I guess this cannon was cast way back in 1837 on the same day as another famous cannon on the Shiloh battlefield called Shiloh Sam. Well, this one here is called Old Abe, and it's the only cannon of its age, which by the way is almost 200 years old, to be sitting on, I guess, its original wooden carriage. But wait, there's more. This cannon was also only fired once in the entire Civil War, and it wasn't as part of any battle. It was fired right here in the mining town a volcano. Okay, the California gold rush happened right before the Civil War. So there were Southerners and Northerners out here because everyone wanted to get rich quick. And so I guess there was some conflict between the Southern sympathizers and the Northern sympathizers here in these mining towns, including here in Volcano. And apparently the Northern sympathizers had this cannon smuggled in into town in a hearse as part of an intimidation tactic to scare the Southerners. Okay, I guess even though California was in the Union and all the gold mined here went into the Union, most of the businesses in town were run by Confederate sympathizers. It's crazy when you think about it. I mean, like I said, something like $200 million worth of gold was mined in this county. And I think in the Volcano Valley, something like $100 million worth of gold was mined and sent to the Union cause. So it's crazy to me to think that there were Confederate sympathizers living here and operating businesses. But according to what I read online, these Union sympathizers had this thing smuggled into town in a hearse, by the way, so they could freak out the Confederate guys. And according to Wikipedia, I guess they fired it off once on Main Street, I guess, and it blew out all the shop windows and scared the Confederate guys into submission. But I don't know, according to the sign here, I mean, say what you will about Volcano, but it does have a ton of historical signs, including this one here, all about the old Abe Cannon. And it talks about how the Confederate Knights of the Golden Circle, that was the Southern affiliated militia here in town, and the Volcano Blues, which was the Union-affiliated militia. Well, I guess they had some kind of disagreement as to where all this gold they'd been mining should be shipped to the north or to the south. And so I guess one day the Confederate Knights marched down Consolation Street to confront the Volcano Blues. But when the Union line parted to reveal a loaded cannon, the Knights dispersed and the town remained secure. Hmm. So basically, it sounds like the Confederate guys challenged the Union guys to some kind of duel. And when they showed up on Main Street, well, talk about bringing a gun to a knife fight. These guys brought a cannon to, I don't know what it was supposed to have been. A fist fight? A musket fight? A rifle fight? Uh, what do I know? I know absolutely nothing about weapons, let alone period weapons. But look at this. Here's another historical sign. Speaking of all these signs, this one is for the Astronomical Observatory. Okay, remember I was saying earlier how the first observatory in California was right here in Volcano, and this is where they first saw some comet that came through in 1861? Well, that happened right here. I guess the Astronomical Observatory must have been in this empty lot, sort of in between 
the old Abe cannon, and I think this is some kind of event hall you can rent out for parties, and it looks like they're about to have a Halloween fun fest with a carnival and a kid's costume contest. How cool is that? I think it's really neat when you go to these old historic ghost towns, but they're not ghost towns. You know, there's still people living here. I mean, not that many people, but according to what I read online, there's something like 59, maybe 100 people still living in Volcano, which I just think is super cool and super interesting. Okay, let's walk down Main Street. And you'll have to excuse the background noise because I think they're doing some construction on some of these historical buildings. I mean, look at these old buildings. I'm going to zoom out. Uh, this is the Main Street, y'all. The street is lined with these amazing old storefronts from the mining days. This here, that looks like, was the assay office. The assay office is where you would take your ore once you prospected and found a spot that you thought was going to yield lots of sweet, sweet, juicy gold or silver. Well, you would take a chunk of that down to the assay office and that guy would basically boil it down and determine how much that ore was worth. I mean, right? I think that's more or less what an assay office did. Anyway, continuing on down Main Street, you can see these buildings are absolutely amazing. I mean, that's got to be an original stone facade. Look at this. <laughs> Yoga. Historic or no, Volcano is still in California. Oh my god, and it's next to a Bell and Sebastian album cover? Wow, talk about a deep cut. What is this, like a thrift store? Oh, I guess it's a coffee shop, and unfortunately, it's closed today. Okay, so apparently this coffee shop used to be the Jug and Rose Confectionery. It says it's a frame building with a Tufa rock facade. Tufa! That's like those stone towers in Mono Lake. I guess there must be naturally occurring Tufa deposits around here. And then look, on the other side of the coffee shop, they've got a Doobie Brothers album. They've got a Dicht. Bijmij by Willy Vanderwinkov. I'm guessing that must be Dutch. Anybody from the Netherlands watching who knows who Willy Vanderwinkov is? Was? Oh, and look here, they got a signed poster from Weezer. Oh my gosh, one of my favorite bands. I guess Weezer must have come here to Volcano and signed this flyer for him. Oh, look. There's like a stained glass Jerry Garcia thing too. Wow. I gotta come back and check out this coffee shop. It looks super fun. Look at that. You never know what you're gonna find in these little tiny mountain towns. And that's not even the most interesting thing about this coffee shop. Look, out in front they have the Magic Cabinet. It says the Magic Cabinet. Our bakery had an abundance. Please help yourself. So I guess when they bake too many baked goods, they put the extras in here and you can just come pick something up for free. Unfortunately, they're not open today. So there is no abundance in the magic cabinet, but I still think that's such a cool idea. But guess what? There's all kinds of cool stuff on this main street, including the Sizemore Country Store, which apparently is one of the, if not the oldest continuously operating country store in California. Okay, you know how all these mining towns had to have like a general store where miners could go buy their horseshoes and nails and flour and tobacco? Well, this sign says this is the oldest continuously operated store in California. It's been operating since 1852. That's almost 200 years. Okay, I guess in all fairness, there's some dispute over what the oldest continuously operating general store in California is. There's another store in Napa County, and then another store down in Knight's Ferry that also claimed to be the oldest continuously operating general store. I don't know, I'm just telling you what I read on the plaque here. But whatever the case, I just think it's cool that it's still open to this day, and you can still go inside, I guess. Uh, that is, as long as you're wearing shoes and a shirt. Well, for once in my life, I'm complying with the rules, so let's see we can go inside. Hi. Oh my god, this is so cool. This is like one of those really old-timey 
Look at order sandwiches here. Oh my god, I love this. All these old cans, coffee cans, Quaker oat cans, tea. Man, this is the kind of general store where I expect to see two old timers sitting at a barrel of cornmeal playing checkers. Well, I don't see a barrel of cornmeal, but there is a barrel with a Peterbilt logo on it. Not sure what that's about. Oh, look, there's Harry Liver's Edge, local hero. Wow, it's wild to think that people have been coming into this store for almost 200 years buying supplies. You know, you would have come in here to get your cornmeal, your sugar, your coffee, your tobacco. And then look at this, they have these amazing old stoves that are in impeccable, immaculate shape. Please do not touch. Yeah, I understand why. Look at that. I see a lot of these busted old stoves in these real old ghost towns I go to that are abandoned and all rusted out. So it's interesting to see what they would have looked like in their prime. Look at all these cool souvenirs too. Looks like they have coffee cups, hats, and there's an amazing looking bar that serves amazing smelling burgers. But unfortunately, uh, I'm not here to eat dinner. Uh, my mom is actually back at the house making something for me. So no burger for me today, but I'm definitely gonna come back here. Actually, well, tomorrow or day after tomorrow, I guess the day after I post this video is my birthday. That's right. I got a birthday coming up and my mom and I are staying up in this sort of general area. And my mom told me she would take me to dinner for my birthday. And I suppose I could have her take me to that bar in there and get a burger. But there's this other place down the road that I think would be even more fun. And just down Consolation Street from the old Abe cabin. Okay, it's not the oldest continuously operating store in California, but it is one of the, maybe the oldest continuously operating inns. Look at this, the Volcano Union Inn, and it serves lunch and dinner. And you can stay there, and from what I saw online, the rooms look super cool. I mean, these are old timey rooms. I think you might have to share a bathroom down the hall, but it's a small price to pay for staying in such a cool historic building. And now of course, we're not gonna stay here because we already have a place to stay in the area. But yeah, I'm gonna have my mom take me here for dinner. Let's just see, it's closed today, but let's peek in the window and see. Oh look, I could even see the menu. First thing on the menu is loaded volcano fries. Mm. And then it looks like they got pork taco, seared salmon, fried chicken, meatloaf, gnocchi. Uh, a little of this, a little of that. Okay, let's peek in this side. Oh, wow, well, like here's the stairs going up to the rooms, I guess. Like, see what I mean? This is just one of those really cool old ends. I mean, this place is from I think the 1880s is what I read online. Let's peek in over on this side. Oh, that's a big dining room. Look at that. Ooh, I love that arch doorway. Fancy. Okay, and there's a historical sign talking about this building. It says this was the Union Billiard Saloon and Boarding House built in 1880. How about that? A saloon and boarding house for the hardworking miners and locals until prohibition in the 1920s. Wah, wah. <laughs> and to make things even worse, it says that Judge Peter Jonas, who incidentally was the judge who presided over that first legal hanging. Well, apparently he lived in the house right next door. So it's not like they could even have a speakeasy or anything. Oh my God, look at this guy rolling around town in his old Jeep with his dog in the back. Man, I'll bet you there are some real characters living here in Volcano. I mean, anyone who would live in one of these tiny remote old mining towns like the people who live in Goldfield or Tonopah. You know, you got to be made of stronger stuff, more interesting stuff. And frankly, I'm surprised that I myself didn't end up in one of these towns. Uh, well, I guess I kind of did considering I do live in a pretty small weird town. Oh, look, here's that theater I was talking about. Remember I said Volcano was the site of the first theater company in California? Well, this Cobblestone Theater is still performing to this day. As a oh, look at that, you can see across the street here, there's the Volcano Amphitheater. Oh yeah, look. Aw, what a fun place to go see a play. And one performed by the oldest theater company 
in California. Anyway, there's the post office operating since 1851. Here's the guys that are restoring one of these old buildings. I mean, look at this. This, I think this is another hotel and you can just tell by the beautiful construction, this brick in the back and then those awesome balconies. Oh my gosh, look, it's next to an old saloon. Why isn't this place open? Again, apologies for the noise, but we got work going on. Folks are hard at work restoring Volcano to its former glory. And hopefully this saloon is next. Oh, the sound of progress. Anyway, here's this amazing old three-story hotel that, golly, I don't know if this is open for business or what. It looks like it's... Well, it says it was the St. George Hotel, and it's on the National Register of Historic Places, but unfortunately, there's a notice of temporary closure. Basically, it says they just need to renovate and clean their kitchen and tavern, and they do plan to reopen this historic hotel, which, according to this sign, has been open since 1863. Oh my god, look inside. So cool. I love that staircase. I love the wallpaper. I love this grand gathering room. Uh, I'm not sure what you would call it. It's not really a dining room. It's not really a lobby, but it's got that amazing fireplace. And then look over on the right, there's a little dollhouse version of the hotel. Oh man, when I was a kid, I would have loved to play with that dollhouse or with that. <gasps> look at that doll sitting on that badass antique sofa. I'll zoom in. Boy, if that isn't creepy, I don't know what is. Oh my God, I just noticed something super awesome. There's this really old phone booth, which is pretty interesting and noteworthy in and of itself because how often do you see a phone booth anymore? But look what's hanging above it. It's a picture of Superman, the old Superman even before Christopher Reeve. And it says, please do not vandalize this phone booth. I have no place else to change clothes. I absolutely love it. I absolutely love everything about this old hotel and this fascinating old historic Main Street. I guess I shouldn't call it Main Street. It's actually called Charleston Street. And then the other street is Consolation Street, which I think is such a funny name. I don't know the history of how it got to be named that, but I don't know. There were a lot of disappointments in the mining days. You know, not everyone who came out here, shocker, did strike gold and get rich. So, you know, plenty of these guys had to find consolation in the saloons and loving arms of women who worked in them and in brothels, which I'm sure there were many of here. Interestingly, I didn't see any old brothel buildings, but I'm sure there were plenty of them, and they probably were on Consolation Street. <laughs> Love that name. Okay, well, just down the road from Volcano Town, there's something else that's supposed to be really interesting, and I'm not sure I'm going to be able to get in because I read different things on Google, but I'm going to try. Ah, oh, dang it. No trespassing road closed? Hmm, I think that's even worse than road closed. Well, unfortunately, I'm not going to be able to get in to see one of the most interesting attractions in Volcano, and that is the Masonic Caves. Okay, somewhere on the hill up above this closed off road, there's apparently three old caves, one of which was used to conduct meetings of the Freemasons. That's right, the Masons, that super secret brotherhood of men. Well, I guess back in the mining days, they didn't have a Masonic hall or a Masonic lodge to meet in. And so they had to have their meetings in a cave. And I would really love to show you that cave, but unfortunately, well, I'd be a darned fool if I trespassed on the internet. And besides, the woman who lives here on this property just drove in in her truck and was very pleasant. But yes, unfortunately, the caves are closed. And she said that they actually still belong to the Masons. And the last thing I want to do is run afoul of the Masons. So we're just going to have to use our imaginations 
somewhere back there there's three caves and i guess the first cave was used by the original white settlers in this area as kind of like a, a store okay i guess before that general store was built they used this cave to sell vegetables nails horseshoes any kind of supplies that the original miners and prospectors would have needed and then the second cave was used as a sort of well i guess it sold ice cream and candy and liquor okay it was a saloon a saloon in a cave oh my god how amazing would that have been apparently there was some kind of spring in the back of the cave and you can see there is a real pretty little creek running right through here well i guess maybe that has something to do with this underground water system in this cave where they stored the liquor bottles i guess to keep them cold in the back of this cave and then the third cave was used to conduct masonic meetings well unfortunately i read online that i think the cave that used to be the saloon there's like some rock at the opening of it that's about to fall down and so i guess you used to be able to go out here in the good old days anybody could walk out here but i don't know if the masons or the park service or whoever maintains the site closed it down and yes you do have to cross private property to get to it so unfortunately we can't see it for ourselves we can only imagine what it must look like somewhere back in those trees up there anyway that is kind of a bummer but to be honest well, I sort of expected it, so I do have one more place in my pocket that we can go check out before I wrap this video about the fascinating area around Volcano, California. And that is Daffodil Hill, which is also, unfortunately, closed indefinitely. I'm not sure what happened, although... I kind of have an idea that it might have been one of those things that just got too popular and too many people came out here. And so the family that owned this very quaint and very historic homestead had to close it down. Okay, so what exactly is Daffodil Hill, you might be wondering? Well, it's an old home site where this prospector, I guess, back in the 1850s, 60s, planted a bunch of daffodils. Okay, way out here in the rugged foothills of the Sierra Nevada mountains. Well, I don't need to tell you that daffodils are not a native species. And so all these women who were dragged out here by their mining or prospecting husbands, well, they probably enjoyed seeing a little touch of home, something to remind them of civilization. And so according to my research, this Dutch guy who emigrated here to work in the mines, I guess, planted a bunch of daffodils all over this hillside. And apparently they still bloom to this day. Like it's one of those things where the whole hillside is blanketed in daffodils, I guess. And so people come from all over the place. We're not that far from the San Francisco Bay Area. It's like a three hour drive from San Francisco. We're only about an mm, hour and a half from Sacramento. So plenty of tourists. I guess, used to come out here and just completely flood this area. In fact, you can see that the family who owns this place now, and according to the sign here, well, this McLaughlin family, I guess, bought this place, presumably from this Dutch guy, back in, I don't know, sometime in the 1850s. And it looks like, as of the time of this sign, which was placed in 1973, it was still in the McLaughlin family. Okay, that's pretty wild to think that, what, 150 years later, the same family still owns, or still owned, this homestead. I'm not sure if they do anymore, um, but what I was gonna say is, the family that owned this, they did, they turned it into a tourist attraction. You can see over here, behind the historical plaque, there's picnic tables, there's even some old, looks like there's an old ore cart over there, some old mining implements. You know, they kind of made it a place where you could sit and have a picnic, and I guess, presumably, look at all the daffodils. Now, I don't know much about daffodils, but I don't know. I mean, I'm guessing all these picnic tables would have been situated somewhere where you could see them, so maybe they were all planted up there in that garden, or maybe they were blanketing that whole hillside, maybe they were all over, I mean, there is some green stuff poking up out of the ground over there. But I don't know, I'm here in mid-September. I don't think you'd be able to see 
Well, hold on. I was going to say, I don't think you'd be able to see any evidence of daffodils right now. I mean, they bloom in the spring, and I think that's when this place blows up. But look at these back here. I mean, aren't these daffodils? I mean, I don't know much about flowers, but I think daffodils grow from bulbs, and that looks like something that grew out of a bulb. So I'll bet you anything that if we were to come back here in the spring, we would still see daffodils. Closed or not, 200 years later or not, there would still be beautiful yellow flowers blooming all the way from 1850 something. That's what I think is so interesting about this area and the town of Volcano in particular. Even though the California gold rush was over a long time ago, there's still plenty of treasures to be found. <laughs>